All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder. We, in the earlier lectures, talked about the front of a diffraction from a double slit. In the previous sections, we are covering that what type of pattern normally will be observed from the double slit. In the part 2, we will be covering that particular part and we will try to finish it so that we could have a better understanding of the things. Myself, Professor Nitin Puri, welcome to S Chance Academy. What we are going to do that, we will be covering the complete part of front of a diffraction at a double slit in this lecture and we'll try to see what type of diffraction will be observed, where the maxima and minima will be observed and how the pattern will look like, how the system will look like, we'll try to understand more in detail about it. If you want to go more in detail about these topics, you can see the ebook ebook link onto the screen in the description box. So the topic which we are going to cover today is the front of a diffraction. Uh, at double slit. The first part we had covered in the earlier lectures and we are going to cover it from there where we stopped in the last lecture. So what we were covering when we started the front of a diffraction at a uh, double slit is that we took, we took two slits as you can see onto the screen. We are taking the two slits AB and CD which are having a width small a and BC which is an opaque portion having a width small b, right? What we had considered there is a complete XY, right? And we are seeing a lens L and MN as a screen and we are observing the, in, uh, the pattern onto the screen. Now the point what we need to see here that the light which is incident plane waves which are incident onto the XY as you can see here these are the plane waves which are incident onto it right and when they are incident on these two slits A, B and C, D every point will work as every point will work as secondary source and there's again the lens is converging it and making a maximum and minima onto the screen MN right so this is MN which is screen right I hope it is clear to each and every one of you now the point what we made it last is that the parallel OP is parallel to it but the waves which are coming parallel to it will be observing the maximum at point P but those which are making an angle theta with the OP will not make the central maximum at point P uh, they will be making at maxima at point P dash. So we started with the interference maxima and minima and in that continuation we discussed it that if if what we had discussed it that we calculated the part difference we draw a perpendicular to it which is AE and we have seen it this angle is theta right and what we have we calculated this part difference right and then when, when we reached to this conclusion then when we had kept it uh, for different different angles so interference maxima and minima we did it last time when we had considered the angle what we had done it if you see the previous lecture we had calculated cn is equal to a plus b sine theta n which is an 2n plus 1 lambda upon 2 right and why from where we got it we got it that if the path difference is an odd multiple of lambda by 2 right and then theta gives the direction of minima and two interference to the secondary waves from the two slits right so cn is equal to 2n plus 1 this we got it that this is sine theta n is equal to 2n plus 1 lambda upon 2 so when we are putting the value of n is equal to 1 2 and 3 and so on we will be able to know what we are going to know if n is equal to 1 we will be able to know theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 and so on right it means this is the direction of corresponding minima 
we are obtaining from this equation, right? So if we are obtaining, it means what, what we got it, it means theta 1 means this is a plus b, this is sine of theta 1 is equal to, which is equal to, if n is equal to 1, this is 3 lambda upon, this is 3 lambda upon 2. So this is theta 1. So theta 1 we got it, this is the first, this is the first minima. So direction of first minima we got it, right, with this equation. Now, when we go to the next part, what exactly, so sine, what exactly the sine theta will be now? This is sine of theta n is equal to 2n plus 1 lambda upon 2 a plus b. This we normally got it. So if you see this one, uh, if you see this, right, sine theta n is equal to 2n plus 1 lambda upon 2 a plus b, correct? We all know about what is A, what is B. A is the slit width, B is the opaque portion width, lambda is the wavelength of the incident wave which is incident onto it, N is that particular order which we are talking of which is uh, 1, 2 and 3. So on the other hand, if the secondary waves traveling in the direction theta dash, not the theta, theta dash, such that the path difference is even multiples of lambda by 2, even multiples of lambda by 2. Then what is going to happen? Then theta dash will give you the direction of maxima due to the interference of the light waves emanating from these two slits. I hope it is clear to you. I repeat it again. We did it for the odd multiples of lambda by 2. Now what I am saying that the secondary waves emanating from the angle theta dash and it is in such a way that part difference is an even multiple of lambda by 2 then what it is going to give us? It is going to give us the maxima due to interference of the light waves emanating from these two slits. So at that particular point of time, what will be the value of Cn will be? And so Cn will be equal to, it will be equal to A plus B sine of theta n dash is equal to 2n lambda upon 2. You see? Now these two things are happening here right now. We are not making an angle theta. We are making an angle theta dash. When it is theta dash and it is even multiple of lambda by 2. So at that particular point of time a plus b sine theta and dash is equal to 2n lambda point 2. It will be equal to sine of theta and dash is equal to n lambda upon a plus b. Right? See, sine theta and dash is equal to n lambda upon a plus b. Now, if you are putting n is equal to 1, 2, and 3, if n is equal to 1, 2, and 3, what is going to happen? We are going to get the value of sine of sine of theta 1 dash, then theta 2 dash, theta 3 dash, and so on. And when we are going to take the difference between the sine theta 2 and sine theta 1, it will give us that particular value which is dependent on lambda along with a and b. So we'll do it, we'll try to do this particular part. Uh, 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 if we, if, bef before going to the break, let me tell you what exactly we are going to cover in that way. We'll try to understand it that if you are getting sine theta 1 and sine theta 2, the difference will be dependent on which factors. So I hope uh, uh, after you will, you will try to understand it that on which factor does it, it will depend on. So when we'll come back after the break, will try to understand in detail that it will be dependent not only on the wavelength but on the slit width along with the opaque portions width as well. I am Dinesh Ahuja, S. Chand Academy. You have the most difficult topics of chemistry and in inorganic chemistry. You will be able to do it easily. If you like my video, please like, subscribe and share it with your friends. Welcome back, uh, welcome to S Chance Academy. What we discussed before the lecture, before the break, that we'll try to understand it, that if angle is replaced from theta to theta dash, what difference we are going to observe as far as the difference of theta one and theta two is concerned. So as you can see onto the screen, we got the value of sine theta and dash is equal to n lambda upon a plus b. So we discussed it that how we are going to calculate the value of uh, theta, sine theta 
1 dash sin theta 2 dash so what will be the value of so sine of theta 1 is equal to 3 lambda upon 2 a plus b right and then we are going to get the value of sine of theta 2 which is equal to 5 lambda upon 2 a plus b right so this is suppose if we say this is equation number one right now this is equation number two right now so we are going to take subtraction between the one and two so it will give us sine of theta two minus sine of theta one it will give us lambda upon a plus b you see so we when we are taking difference of this one it is coming out to be lambda upon a plus b lambda upon a plus b so the angular separation the angular separation between any two consecutive minima or maxima i repeat it again sine theta 2 and sine theta 1 what we are taking we are taking the separation angular separation between the two consecutive either minima or maxima on which so it is equal to lambda upon a plus b right you can see this is equation number three this is the important outcome which we got it from form of a diffraction at a double slit but we got it so you see what now we are trying to compare it we'll discuss more in detail about it but first of all what we are just trying to relate it with what we observed it with a single slit and what we are going to observe from the double slit so when we are observing the angular separation between any two consecutive minima or maxima it is coming out to be equal to lambda upon a plus b so the angular separation is inverse what 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 we what we can conclude from it that it is inversely proportional to a plus b you see sin theta 2 minus sin theta 1 it is this is a plus b so you see this one this particular part and this is because a plus b in this one so it is inversely proportional to a plus b so what we can conclude from it so if it is inversely proportional to it which is the distance between the two slits right so this is the conclusion of this one that the angular separation is inversely proportional to the distance between the two slits now when we come on to the diffraction maximum minima which will be observed from so let us consider a secondary wave let us consider a secondary wave which is traveling in the direction which is inclined at an angle phi with the initial direction of the incident light right so if the part difference uh, if you see this one um, uh, i i hope uh, i had made a figure for that one in the previous section but if if you allow me i will make it in the another way quick session so this is this we had made it and uh, we had made it in that way i hope you remember it i'm going to make it again for all of you so so this we had did we did it this is a b c and d and then this is uh, this we did it in the previous sections so this is the angle we got it right so what we said it this is um, this is a like this if it is right and this i said it this if this is uh, if this is m this is n right this angle is we know already this is theta right this is theta again so this 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 if we again this is we know that this is slit width we talked about it this is the uh, opaque portion width we talked about it this is again a i made it this uh, figure in the uh, previous sections as well so if you see this one this angle we said it because this is a perpendicular this is angle theta we know that this is the part difference we are talking of right now right again right so if we say this one if the part difference this bm now i'm talking of this particular part difference is part difference bm if a part difference bm it is equal to lambda if it is equal to lambda the wavelength of the light used at that particular point of time phi will phi what will this phi will give you this phi will give us the direction of diffraction minimum right so 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 what exactly so it means in this figure we are trying to understand it that diffraction maxima and minima we are trying to observe it right what we said it we are considering the waves traveling in the direction inclined at an angle phi with the initial direction of the incident light right at that particular point of time we need to calculate the value of phi 
So if the path difference is equal to lambda, the wavelength of the light used at that particular point of time, phi will be the direction of the diffraction minimum. So this it means that is that is the path difference between secondary waves emanating from the uh, extremities of the slit, right? So it, it is clear from this figure as well, along with the figure which we have made it uh, at the first where two slits along with the lens and the screen was visible to all of us, right? So part difference between the secondary waves emanating from these extremities of the slit, that is point A and B, which is equal to lambda. So considering the wave front of, uh, uh, so considering the uh, waves uh, front on AB to be made up of two halves, which we have made it AB and CD, the part difference between the corresponding points of the upper, uh, you know, and the lower halves is equal to lambda by two. Right, and the effects of this P dash, which is due to the wave front incident on AB, is zero at that particular point of time. With the same difference or distance of the secondary waves, the effect of P dash due to the wave front, which is incident onto the slit CD, is also zero. Therefore, what we can say, what we can conclude right now, that A sine of phi n is equal to n lambda. Right. So it means n is equal to, if we are putting n is equal to 1, 2 and 3, the values of phi 1, phi 2, phi 3 corresponding to the direction of diffraction minima, minima will also be observed. So, so, so it means uh, what exactly we had covered in that one, that we could be able to see the uh, diffraction pattern from, uh, uh, from the double set in which we had observed it. Now it means uh, two, three things we got it. Uh, so if we need to... Uh, comply on this way uh, we can say these three things we got it what we, have, what we calculated we had calculated cn is equal to if i compare all the things which we did it it is 2n plus 1 lambda upon 2 uh, then cn is equal to we got it at 2n uh, 2n lambda upon 2 and then we calculated this sine theta 2 minus sine of theta 1 which is equal to lambda upon a plus b so the, these three equations we got it. So from from all the uh, all the descriptions, what we did it, we got these three equations as well. So we, we can see here that uh, the direction of minima due to the interference of secondary waves from the two slits, we got it. Cn is equal to 2n plus 1 lambda upon 2. When we say Cn is equal to 2n lambda upon 2, it means at that particular point of time, the maxima due to interference of light waves emanating from the two slits, we got it, and it is an uh, uh, part difference is an even multiples of lambda by 2 then we got this equation when we said it that uh, 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 we need to take the angular separation uh, uh, between the two consecutive minima or maxima we could be able to see that it is dependent on lambda and a plus b so we have seen it that it is inversely proportional to a plus b so it means if the slit width is increasing or decreasing we could be able to see the difference in the angular separation uh, between the two consecutive maxima and minima. So what, what we had concluded in uh, this uh, uh, maxima uh, and minima diffraction pattern which will be observed from front of a diffraction at a double slit that we are not only uh, observing the maxima and minima but there is a difference between the intensity pattern which we observed it from a single slit and which we are observing from the double slit. Right. So what it means, what we had, what is the difference between the two is, it is not only the single slit we had considered, we had considered double slit. So in that case, also in the single slit, it is happening that light is incident onto it. And we are observing the interference pattern, on, uh, the diffraction pattern onto the screen or with the interference also of the secondary source sources due to the Huygens principle. And the, there is a lens which is focusing onto the screen. And we had considered it is not only the parallel waves, it is the waves which are you know, making an angle theta with the, you know, perpendicular to it. So we could be able to see that if they are going to the different angles onto the screen, we could be able to see different type of patterns, which is dependent on the angular distribution of uh, alpha, uh, angular distribution of the consecutive maxima and minima, which we are observing onto the screen. So this is end of uh, uh, the, uh, this part where we could be able to see the front of a diffraction uh, uh, with the double slit, right? And then the previous section which we had covered up to now uh, will be an added advantage of understanding the comparison uh, between the single slit along with double, double slit as well. So if you want to go more in detail about these topics, uh, you can go through the S. Chan publishing uh, book 
uh, ebook link of that particular book of which is published by S Chan is available onto the description box onto the screen if you have liked this lecture please like share and subscribe uh, thank you so much